Hi, and welcome to the Industry Solutions Experience Lab located in the beautiful Austin, Texas. My name is Evie Torres, and I'll be taking you through a demonstration of the IBM Intelligent Operations Center solution, which is what you see behind me on the displays of our Network Operations Center of our lab. The IBM Intelligent Operations Center solution allows organizations to effectively supervise and manage the operations within their city. In our particular demonstration, we are effectively supervising and managing the operations within the city of Rome, Italy, all through a single portal-based user interface. Within the city of Rome, we have three main users that are monitoring the health of the city to ensure smooth operations. Each particular user role has their own unique dashboard, which contains portlets that allow them to monitor what is important to them based on their specific role. The first role within our city is the mayor, which is located on the left monitor. The mayor monitors the overall health of the city. On the right hand monitor, we have the deputy mayor, who is a bit more hands-on than the mayor and is also responsible for city approvals. Our third role in our demonstration is the city operator or the city coordinator, who actually does the tasks at hand. Now let's take a look at each of the individual dashboards to see what information they are looking at. On the mayor's dashboard, we see several portlets throughout the page. The role-based access control extends to the individual portlets on the page, as well as the content that's displayed within each portlet. These portlets allow the mayor to get a quick status of the things that are important to him or her, such as reducing the crime in the city or improving traffic conditions. The main portlet, which is located on the left-hand side of the dashboard, allows the mayor to get an executive level summary of the status of the key performance indicators throughout a single agency or across multiple agencies. The top news events portlet on the right-hand side presents to the mayor the individual news events that have to be monitored to ensure that the city services aren't negatively impacted. On the bottom of the dashboard, we see some additional portlets. The key contacts portlet allows the mayor to collaborate and coordinate among the different agencies within the city. On the left-hand side on the bottom, we see the key events portlet, which displays the location of the key events on a geospatial map. On the middle, we see the Palazzo portlet, which provides the video feeds of the events that the mayor is keeping an eye on. And on the right-hand side, we see the weather portlet, which enables the mayor to monitor the weather events, which can affect everything going on throughout the city. The deputy mayor has two individual dashboards, which allow the deputy mayor to access more information that will help him or her stay on top of situations within the city. Let's take a look at the first dashboard, which is labeled as the city status. On the left-hand side, you see the status portlet, which provides the same executive level KPI summary so that the deputy mayor can see what the mayor is looking at at the same time. On the right hand side, the deputy mayor has access to the key performance indicator drill down portlet, which allows the deputy mayor to investigate how lower level KPIs contribute to the change of a top level KPI in the status portlet. When you double click on a cell in the status table, such as the fire department, the KPI drill down portlet adapts to display the details of the selection. On the lower section of the dashboard, you also see an approvals portlet. The approvals portlet allows the deputy mayor to take a look at the task list of past and open approvals for which the deputy mayor is responsible for. On the right hand side, the deputy mayor also has access to historical details which presents data that is relevant to the selected key performance indicators. We also see two other portlets which were introduced in the mayor's dashboard. Those are the weather portlet and the key contacts portlet, which allows the deputy mayor to collaborate within different agencies of the city. Now let's take a look at the deputy mayor's coordination page. From the left-hand side, we can see that the deputy mayor has access to the events map portlet. This portlet allows the deputy mayor to track and manage planned events such as road repairs and sporting events, predicted events such as weather that's expected tomorrow within the city, and events that are happening now such as traffic jams. The location of each event is plotted on the map with an icon that corresponds to the events category. 
By clicking on an event on the map, we can see the event details. Below the map, the Deputy Mayor also has access to the Events List portlet. Within this portlet, the Deputy Mayor is able to track the same events as the map, just in a more detailed tabular format that can be filtered and sorted. The map portlet contains a form called Select Content on Map and Event List for specifying which events are shown on the map in the events list. The two portals interact with each other based on the different actions the Deputy Mayor takes. For example, if the Deputy Mayor is to select an event in the event list, such as the downtown warehouse fire, the location is highlighted on the map at the same time. If we scroll to the bottom of the dashboard, we also see the notifications portlet. Within this portlet, the Deputy Mayor is able to see the status changes of events as well as other events that are taking place in the same location so that they're not overlooked. On the top right hand corner, the Deputy Mayor has access to two event portlets, one based on severity and one for the events that are in progress and are planned. Both portlets giving the Deputy Mayor a graphical view of the different events that are going on. On the bottom right hand side, we also see the Workflow Summaries portlet. In this portlet, the Deputy Mayor has access to the progress throughout the standard operating procedures for handling events. And below, very similarly to the other dashboards, the Deputy Mayor also has access to key contacts to collaborate within the different agencies of the city. And lastly, we have the dashboard of the Citywide Coordinator, or the Citywide Operator. If you look closely at this dashboard, you'll realize that it is very similar to the Deputy Mayor's coordination page, just that the city operator is able to take action on different events within the city. Now that you saw the different dashboards for the three individual users, let's take a look at what's going on in the city. The mayor logs into his dashboard to take a quick view of the city. He notices the public safety domain has the Civil Affairs Department in red. This means there's an event that needs to be looked into for further analysis. The mayor goes over to the top news events portlet. He sees there is a protest going on against cutting transportation funds which has been marked as severe. This event is linked to the Civil Affairs KPI being read. The mayor also notices that there are other events in the portlet but can safely assume that they are being taken care of since the KPI status view does not highlight any other domains or departments as being read. He decides to same time the deputy mayor to make sure the deputy mayor is aware of the situation and is handling the protest. The deputy mayor has received the same time message from the mayor and is not sure why the rally has been escalated too severe. It is a planned event as he had already approved to have the request earlier this week. He decides to drill down into the civil affairs domain to get more information. As the Deputy Mayor expands the Civil Affairs KPI details on the right-hand side, he notices that the total active crowd size is red. This means the crowd size is bigger than what he originally approved. This is why the current status is now showing as Take Action. He also sees that historically the crowd sizes have been around 750 people within the last month, but they appear to be a bit higher today, which is an indication that he needs to take this rally seriously. The Deputy Mayor takes a further look at his City Coordination Dashboard, which is more operationally focused, to see what else is going on in the City to make sure there isn't anything else that needs further action. On the map, he notices there is a subway station that is closed. Normally this would be a routine situation, but since it is only a few miles away from the rally, then it needs to be looked into. The system also automatically detects that there are multiple events happening all within the same radius. The Deputy Mayor decides to check with the Chief of Police, which is on location, and together they decide that the rally needs to be escalated to an incident status. This means there are standard operating procedures that need to take place in order for the incident to be taken care of. The Deputy Mayor same times the citywide operator to make sure everyone is on the same page. After having gotten the same time message from the Deputy Mayor, the city operator right-clicks on the rally protest and selects Perform Workflow to kick off the standard operating procedure. The procedure will reroute the buses away from the protest area and will increase the bus frequency so that people have the option to leave the area safely. The citywide operator sends a request to the Transportation Department to reroute the buses via email 
as well as asking for a confirmation as soon as the request has been received. All this is part of the standard operating procedures. While this is happening, the operations center will automatically send the police, public safety, and fire agencies a notice letting them know that the buses have been rerouted. This is key to making sure the city is well prepared and on top of the situation. Once this step is complete, the city operator can let the deputy mayor know since he requested the procedure to take place. At each step of the way, the workflow history is keeping track so that the city has a way to review what has happened. This brings us to the end of our demonstration. As you just saw, the IBM Intelligent Operations Center solution allows organizations to effectively manage and coordinate their operations, all within a single user interface. For any additional information, please contact us at any of the links provided at the end of this video.